What's going on, Reloaders? Welcome to another edition of Ranger Fieldcraft here. I have put together a super easy and quick induction annealing setup that can be just as accurate as the big machines, but for a fraction of the cost. Most guys that anneal are doing it one of two ways. They're doing the old propane torch method, which has its own mixed reviews. And then there's the relatively new induction annealing machines, which are pretty cool, but they are highly cost prohibitive. Not only that, but they make you buy a bunch of extra parts and it only does five to six cases a minute. For that price, this thing better be spitting them out at a cyclic rate. With this setup, you'll be able to knock out 50 cases in about five minutes. The first thing you're gonna need is the induction heater itself. You can get these for under $200 on eBay or Amazon. It's obviously handheld, it has an internal fan for cooling it down while you're operating it. And the on-off switch is that little red button there in the middle. And look at there. It even comes with a set of eight coils, which is an added bonus, considering coils are sold separately with those bigger machines. The coils are several different sizes, but you won't be using any of the standard ones in here. For the inductor to do its thing, the coils need to be close to the case, but not touching. That is where these come in. The kit comes with two extra wires for you to roll your own, basically, which is what I did. The shorter the coil or the wire that makes up the coil, the more efficient the induction is. Uh, so I cut a piece off of here and uh, made my own coil. You want just enough space around the brass so that it doesn't touch. Next, you're going to need this fun little piece. This is a programmable digital cycle delay relay timer switch module. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can get all this stuff, so don't worry about it, you can get the exact same one. And to power all this, you're going to need a three prong extension cord and basically any type of AC-DC adapter. This relay timer works off of anywhere from 6 to 30 volts, so if you have anything that looks like this, it'll work. You're going to need some kind of housing unit for the module. You get extra style points for using a bullet box and it is surprisingly practical. All you've got to do is trace the module out and make your cuts. Uh, the bullet box allows you to easily access the back of the module to work on it. Then just cut out some holes in the bottom to fit the wires and you're good to go. Okay, after you've got your housing unit cut open, basically you can take that uh, three prong extension cord with the ground and Cut the sheathing off, looks like uh, six or eight inches, and then we're gonna cut this black wire, right? Once you get that done, just shove the cut ends up into the box, and I put a little zip tie around here to keep it from pulling back through. So this module here is actually powered by DC voltage. You can get them uh, powered by AC as well. well this one's like $13. The AC powered one's like $17, I think. I just happen to have a spare uh, computer power supply, so that's what I'm going to use to power this guy up. So what I did was a little hole in the bottom for the cable, just cut a little slit in the box. That's what we're going to fit this wire right through. And now we're good to go. We've got all our wires going into the housing unit. So the module itself, once you get it cut, Right there 19 volts cool all right so the polarity is right next we are going to put them into the module right and down here it's pretty easy right you can see positive negative right okay we're gonna finish wiring this thing up now uh, with our three prong extension cord so the cord that actually plugs into the wall, that hot wire is gonna go in to this next, uh, this third little slot here. All right. And that would leave the last slot for the other end.
All right, let me get this thing plugged in and we'll try it out. All right, we're gonna go through a couple of the settings here on the module just so I can kind of show you how it works. Most of them that are in this configuration are gonna have the set button here. Hold that down to enter the set mode. And P5 is gonna be the program uh, for this particular module. P5 is gonna be on for a set amount of time, off for a set amount of time, and then a continual loop after that. So um, up and down arrow changes your program. P5 is what we want. So we will move on to the next. And OP, that's gonna be output uh, time and I have it at 3.75 seconds just uh, for now until I can actually get my uh, exact time. And I know the description said down to a tenth of a second, but this module actually goes down to the hundredth of a second. So pretty good accuracy there. Uh, so we're good with 3.75 on that. And closed, I have it closed. It's gonna be off for four seconds, so it'll be on 3.75 off for four seconds. And uh, you change the time, obviously, with the up and down arrows. Hold down the set again to save your settings. All right, now, whenever you're ready to go, you just hit the start button. And it'll start with that four second timer delay and then count down to that 3.75 seconds. And then just uh, repeat that cycle continuously until you uh, turn it off. Let's show you how this thing works. All right, so we've got everything plugged in here. Got my annealer. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the button here to actually uh, turn on the inductor. Now the timer is just going to basically allow this button to work or not work. So I'll hold down the red button on the uh, annealer and hit the start timer. And in 3.75 seconds, it turns off. And then when you're done, just stop holding down the red button. You can stop the timer. And then I basically just round robin this uh, reloading tray, just going from round to round. Now, uh, obviously this coil gets pretty hot right and you can't do this forever or you'll burn up the coil so what I figured out is basically just have a couple spares on standby and whenever this coil gets too hot you can just unscrew the, the screws drop the coil put a new one in and you're reloaded ready to go again I also I don't know if you can hear it I also do keep a little uh, little table fan going and that also helps to keep the whole system cool and it cools off that coil pretty quick too so that really helps a lot and it also pushes air through the inductor uh, when it's not running because the fan only runs while you're holding down the button here so table fan is really going to give you some longevity when you're doing this and uh, let you really get some rounds down Another thing is you can actually make your own coils. So I put this together, that, that sheathing that's on there, that heat shield, is only so the coils basically don't touch each other. But if you go uh, to Home Depot or whatever and you get your own wire, thick, the thickest gauge wire they have uh, that'll fit, you can basically make your own coil as long as the coils don't touch, the wire's not touching anywhere, and um, you can use that as well. So these coils, for whatever reason, if you look them up, are really expensive whenever you're buying them online. So this kit comes with plenty to be able to make, I mean, probably at least a dozen or more uh, of these, and that'll last you forever. But even if it doesn't, you can still get by with a uh, standard coil. Also, the tighter that coil fits around the cartridge, the faster it heats up. So if you do make extra coils, you need to make sure that they are at the exact same length and the same amount of coils each time because that's going to change the time that it takes for your case to get properly annealed, right? 
for instance, this guy I made for my 223 Ackley, and it fits pretty tight around there, and that thing gets almost white hot in less than three seconds. I mean, it, it anneals really fast. So the closer the coil is to the cartridge around it, the faster it will anneal, which translates to less workload on the annealer, so you're actually able to do more cases uh, before it starts getting hot. I'm gonna try to show you all this. You don't really even have to do it in low light to get the annealing that you need. So I'm gonna hit this on the next cycle and show you, you're gonna see a little flash of gray, and after that gray is when it starts turning that, that dark red. See, there goes the gray, and you just might have barely seen it start to go dark red. That's all you need, right there. This, this copper wire here, the one without the insulation on it, gets so hot so fast. I mean, I was just melting cases in like under five seconds. So I'm going to show you how powerful uh, this inductor actually is here. So let's turn on it. All right, that was five seconds. And let me get something to spin that with. Look at that. I mean, just crumpled that case. This annealer is obviously very capable and very powerful, so it shouldn't have any problem uh, keeping up with the workload. I was having pretty good success just doing it manually and counting and just looking for that glow, but you can see with the timer, it is a lot more uniform annealing across the board there. I'm gonna show you how fast I can do some 223 Ackley. After some trial and error, we, uh, I think we found the sweet spot here. It's gonna be 1.08 seconds per case. That is really fast, and you're not putting a whole lot of workload on the, the annealer, so you could do a lot of cases like this. So I'm gonna get this thing started here. That was pretty fast and all of these cases annealed exactly the same. There's obviously some benefits to annealing uh, but I think induction annealing has uh, its own added benefits. For one, you know it's superheating that metal so fast that the heat doesn't have time to travel down the case and get into the head of the cartridge. So you're keeping that heat localized for the most part because it, the brass cools off really fast after you're done. I don't have anything really against those uh, professional machines. They, they probably work just fine. I don't know, I've never used one. And if you have one, you know, hey, there's no beef here, right? I just figured out a way to do this for 200 bucks. So I'm sure there's some annealing experts out there and they're gonna, uh, you know, poke holes in something. I'm either over annealing or under annealing or it shouldn't be that red or it's not red enough, whatever. I get it. If I'd have known I could have been annealing with this much accuracy and it was this cheap and this much fun to do, I would have been doing this years ago. If you've got 200 bucks laying around and you're on the fence about getting into annealing, uh, this is well worth it. I've been having a blast.